Hey, how's it going? It's Ra Agave. I know I have been MIA for a little bit, but it's been pretty freaking hectic. I know that a lot of you can say the same thing. Not because I'm saying that you're going through something and I'm trying to like tell you what you're going through, but I've just been hearing that a lot of people have been going through a lot of stuff and I don't want to make, I want to make sure that I acknowledge you too as one of those people. Um, today I want to be talking about um, my experience as being a trans human. Alrighty, so let's just go ahead and jump into some things that we're going to talk about today. And for me, I wrote down some questions. Um, I'm just going to pretty much answer them. So one common question I've noticed from a lot of people is essentially, you know, how did you know you were trans and when did you know? So basically, like, I pretty much in retrospect, right? At the time, I didn't know. I haven't known. I haven't like known and acknowledged that I've known um, for a really long time. But I have known for even in high school. I remember I used to always say that I was a metrosexual dude trapped inside of a female's body. I just, I personally have always, you know, everybody has their own insecurities within themselves. For my personal self, it's always been my height. And I never really wanted to be a short dude. So I basically ignored my my gender for a really long time. And then, uh, yeah, I remember the first time I had said something to someone, I was like, it was a friend of mine who's actually gay. And we were sitting outside the YMCA and I looked at him and I said, you know, what if I was transgender? And he laughed, he laughed at me. He said, bitch, are you? And then I said, well, no, you know, of course I was scared. I was, I didn't want to be laughed at. So I just kind of brushed it off and kept it moving. I remember actually, and then after that, I essentially realized that I was non-binary before I really even knew what non-binary was. I just, you know, I changed my gender on Facebook to he, and I knew that I didn't really understand, but I wasn't necessarily female. And then I had, um, I went to a family, you know, before this, I actually was hanging out with a couple of friends. One is trans now, one of them is cis, female. Um, but I remember saying, you know, I'm non-binary to them. I were sitting inside of this place eating food and they looked at me and they said, well, you look like a girl though, you know, you look like a female, how could you? And I didn't even push it. I was so not confident in myself that I pretty much just allowed them to tell me that because I look like a female that I couldn't be non-binary. And so therefore I wasn't gonna continue to push it. I was just going with the flow and kept it moving. And then a little after that, basically I went to a family reunion and I remember one time my family members were laughing about, um, someone coming out as non-binary they weren't they were just they were just joking with one of the dudes and he's like i want to make an announcement and they said oh he's coming out as non-binary haha ha. but so i say all that to say is essentially i pretty much have always known but every single time i've ever tried to have a conversation with somebody about it's just kind of been shut down or laughed at or dismissed um and so i guess i never i always knew but i never really knew because i didn't even allow myself to have those conversations to even stimulate those thoughts within my head because I was so worried and scared about what other people would think. And that's the true answer to that. Um, <clears throat> cool. Also, I just wanna go ahead and take a second to acknowledge something um, before I talk about it. I was about to talk about, you know, my breasts and how I have them um, essentially and how they make me feel. I want to know. I want to. I want to point out that there are two words. Okay, dysphoria and dysmorphia. Okay, uh, a lot of people, even in the trans and queer community, they're saying they're feeling dysphoric, dysphoric about their body, dysphoric about their body. So dysphoric actually means that you're dissatisfied with life. Which yes, you could technically say that you're using the right word, but actually dysmorphic is being confused or dissatisfied with your body specifically um so i just wanted to make sure i mention that because i think a lot of people are using the word dysphoria when they mean dysmorphia and um i think it's just important to stay educated on the words that you're using and making sure that you're using them in an appropriate way especially uh when you're a part of a <sighs> essentially marginalized group um you need to be on your p's and q's and we need to know what we're talking about, family, and so I'd like to say dysmorphia. 
and dysmorphia, right? Let's talk about that for a second. So dysmorphia, like I said, it means having a little bit of uh, dissatisfaction with your body. So a lot of my, <clears throat> a lot of male to female individuals may feel, uh, and female, and F to M, also will feel um, a little dysmorphic towards maybe their voice, about their chest area, about their genital region, um, and then just all kinds of the face, you know, um, and for the opposite reasons, right? Not smooth enough, not sharp enough, uh, not hairless enough, a little too hairy, a little too deep, a little too high, right? Um, and I will say, I want to take a second and pause there because uh, a lot of people may not know this information, but when you go M to F, um, there's no... There's technically no voice change. You actually have to go to speech therapy and practice and practice and practice because from what I understand, the, you already have an Adam's apple and the vocal cords don't shrink, right? But if you're going uh, F to M, they have the capacity to stretch, which will help your voice go a little bit deeper and the capacity to go deeper. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that while as I'm making this video that I pay tribute to the fact that I do understand that to an extent, of course, that there is F to M privilege. Being a trans male, trans masculine individual is is definitely a privileged lifestyle as far as the transgender community goes. Not only can, um, not only does the voice, you know, change, but there's just, unfortunately that is a thing. And I just wanted to make sure that I paid my respects and that I, I mentioned that. Um, yeah. Okay. So another thing that people would feel dysmorphic about as, you know, like I said, my facial hair. And while we're talking about that, I'm going to pause. <clears throat> I personally, right? I personally started growing facial hair before I started testosterone. My journey has actually been one full year. Okay. July 6th of last year, I decided and I realized and I accepted and I was okay with the fact that I am trans, trans, transgender. I'm a non-binary masculine, beautiful transgender male individual, uh, male, female, whatever. And, um, and so what I started to do actually is I started to meditate a lot more, uh, focusing on my facial hair, right? Focusing on the growth of it, focusing on watching my body redistribute so i say my body redistribute because for people who do not know this when you take hormones your body fat redistributes literally uh the breasts kind of go out a little bit the curves like if you notice anybody who knew my body before i used to be a lot more curvy in this region but now it's a lot more straight um and not only that my my face shape it's not that my face shape is changing what's happening is that the fat and my cheeks is redistributing elsewhere. So it makes me look like I have a more sharper, uh, a sharper face. I've grown lots of hair. I, I, mean, I don't have that much arm hair, but I had like none before. Um, armpit hair, always had it, it hasn't changed. Um, I am growing more of a full style of a beard. I will say for my personal self, I do exfoliate every few days and I still meditate on it. Um, it's my understanding that a lot of, F to M individuals struggle with facial hair growth initially. And I've only been actually on testosterone for seven months, I believe, um, or eight months, something like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, the hair is coming, but for my own personal self, I, tr I, I do believe that testosterone sped it up. I think personally for myself that if I continued to meditate that I would have had um, a little bit more of a growth. I think maybe it wouldn't have been as full because, you know, science and testosterone, they are working together. But I, for my personal self, I do believe that I am helping my own personal hair grow by focusing and on meditating on that. I actually stopped talking to someone because before I started tea, I had mentioned that, you know, how I, that was happening for me as they were going through their transition. And I'm and they say, you know, why do you have facial hair? And I said, I've just been focusing on it and meditating it on it. And and they didn't believe me, which is okay. But I have had other F to M individuals tell me, you know, I noticed that you have more facial hair. And 
And I think that just with everything else, man, your mind is really strong. I believe that, right? Other people don't believe this, so maybe it won't work for them because you got to believe it in order for it to work. But I believe that I'm helping myself by meditating and exfoliating and giving it attention and rubbing it in my hair here in this area i massage it right because i do not want my hair to thin out <laughs> and start to you know bald and everything so i definitely you know some of this here and make sure all of this massage get the skin stimulated again exfoliate every few days um when you have it kind of play with it rub it talk to it you know just like a plant you want a plant to grow uh you got to water it feed it and i think that's the way that you should see yourself and your body in the in the areas that you would want to be growing um definitely i want to say uh back to dysmorphia something else like okay so the uh so breasts and love handles i don't know the scientific term for love handles so i'm just gonna say love handles um i think a lot of i think sometimes there might come so much privilege and trigger warning from what i'm about to say anybody who may not be ready to hear this um and this is my own personal belief right but i truly believe that a lot of the dysmorphia that people that um m no f to m specifically right because specifically that's what i'm talking about that's the only thing i have experience with um i've noticed that a lot of uh, F to M individuals feel very, you know, very dysmorphic about their breasts, their love handles. And, and I, and I think it's really important to remember that. I mean, unless you have really, I'm not talking about people who have, you know, extremely larger breasts or, um, you know, or maybe you're I'm not talking about that. I understand. Right. But someone who maybe have smaller breasts for myself, I try to remember this and I have, you know, small love handles. It's important to remember that those things do not indicate women. Those things, there are men in the world, cis-born men in the world that have breasts. There are cis-born men in the world that have love handles. There are skinny men, cis men who have love handles. Love handles, you know, that doesn't necessarily, I understand feeling however you want to feel and people are very valid but for my own self i've i've come to terms that and that's and that's why i'm able to i i personally do not want top or bottom surgery i've kind of you know if things change things change but i just try to look at the for myself the privilege in that the privilege in being able to just remove something and just feel like okay everything's fine when like I said, there are cis-born men who, who do have breasts, out, breasts as well. And no matter what they've done, that's just their life. And I don't think that they're less of a man because of that. You know, I just think that body types are different. So for my own self and the way that I've been able to move through that is just to really recognize and check my ego and just compartmentalize in a different way. Love handles, I personally don't have... I do have some. They're not the hugest, but I also go to the gym and I realize that if I really want... To know um, that one, it just might be my body type because I'm Hispanic and whatever. But if I would like to do something about it, I want to make sure that I, I know I cut out certain foods and I incorporate. And I say all this to say not to invalidate somebody's insecurities. They're valid. They're real. It's just those things do not equal womanhood. Those things do not equal femininity. I will even say... I will take it a step further and for my own personal self, having an enlarged, essentially, uh, you know, people know, people may not know this, but when you take testosterone, your clitoris actually grows a little bit. Um, and, you know, a lot of trans men call it their dick, their junk. I personally call it a micro penis because that's what it is. It's a micro penis. Um, I don't like to confuse or overcomplicate anything. I like science and facts because there's no right or wrong to science or facts i feel that that's just what it is and i don't feel no type of way and um you know for myself i, I think i i know somebody who who was you know was on vacation once and was intimate with a man and she told me he had a micro penis and she described it and she talked about it and everything and I say that story to say that doesn't mean that dude was less of a man because he had a mic. I'm not going to look down in my my pants and be say, oh, micro penis. I, I personally feel I don't feel no type of way. You know, I think that whatever you believe in, you know, you got what you for myself. Right. I have what I have. And I am so grateful that I am able to be in a place where I can love and accept myself for who I am today. 
Um, and the advice that I have to share with the world is essentially like, remember that masculine does not equal anything. Just like female does not, or male and female, they don't actually, masculine and feminine, these things don't, these don't equal that. Guys like flowers, women like trucks. Like, I think it's really hard when you're in a marginalized group to not feel like everything is about you and the world's attacking you because you feel so attacked all the time just for existing. But at the end of the day, when you really break it down and you go home and you sit with yourself and you look in that mirror and you write in your journal and it's about loving yourself, man. And as long as you love yourself, as corny as it sounds, everything else becomes a little bit easier. And you're able to just see things through a different lens, a lens of, you know, more logic and fact and not so emotionally stemmed and triggered. And granted, I am coming from a place, I'm not in my 20s, you know, I'm coming from a place, not that I'm old, oh my God, but like, I am coming from a place where I, I've developed into myself a little bit more. I, I've gained more clarity on myself. I don't know myself. I will never claim to know myself because I don't think that's possible to ever fully know yourself or ever changing. Um, and that's the beautiful part about humans is that they're ever changing and ever evolving, right? Um, I don't know, but... So, uh, something I'd really like to talk about um, that I haven't talked about yet, because I have two, I have basically two things here. What are some major changes that I've undergone? But I actually want to talk about something a little bit different, um, which is the bathroom. This is kind of what I'm going to end on here. I guess this video is just mostly for a rant, trans information trans perspective my perspective right my views because i see a lot of people in the world having very similar views of trans being transgender and everything and i know that mine are a little bit different from a lot of people and so i know that there's somebody else out there that thinks similar than me because i almost feel kind of shame for saying what i'm saying and feeling how i'm feeling because i know there are a lot of men and women transgender and not transgender who will be kind of triggered by what i'm saying and that's definitely not my intention and I'm sorry if I seem insensitive or anything because that's absolutely not where I'm coming from. I just, I think there are different avenues and different ways of doing things and this is where I'm at, okay? Um, but with that said, I'd like to talk about bathrooms. I, you can see, I, 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 I like right now, right? I'm wearing this little top thing and I'm wearing this little top thing on purpose because you know what? I am showing you that not only am I saying these things, but I believe it. This top does not equal womanhood. No, it doesn't. These boys shorts do not equal guyhood. This necklace, these earrings, this, the, none of this, the, none of this equals anything. And that's the beautiful part about having thoughts and existing is being able to make that decision for yourself. And that's the decision I decided to make for myself. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ladies and gentle days, we really gotta figure out something when it comes to the bathroom situation for our queer people of society. I, sure, when I dress up more, more um, you know, on the more masculine side, I'm not, I know I just said it's nothing, but you know what I mean? It's just easier way to put it, right? When I, societal, masculine, right? When I dress more masculine, I can get away with the more, you know, that side, but I know I look like a girl. I know my voice is soft. I actually just recently started getting sirred on the phone, which is kind of nice. But when I get excited and, and when I'm comfortable and I'm not, because that's the thing, I'm not here to prove anything. So I'm not going to make my voice deeper just because I want someone to think. I'm not going to base my voice higher and make myself more. And it's not, no, this is who I am. And who I am is not necessarily safe in public restrooms. And I don't know if people think about that. So that's actually the note that I'm going to leave you on today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you have any questions that I can answer, um, please ask me. And I appreciate you, anybody who's you, going on this journey with me. And I thank you for watching and supporting. And if you can all just do me a favor and don't forget 
to love yourself today because I don't know who you are. I don't know who's listening to this right now, but I love you. I love you and you are me and I am you and we are all connected. I love you, which means you love you. So if you could just remind yourself, that'd be really great. Ciao.